and welcome to my review of a recently released pair of PMC speakers. I just want to say if you've been following the saga of the broken glasses, all's well, that ends well because I've got myself a pair of Buddy Hollies. But back to the PMC speaker review. Now the name of these speakers is slightly confusing. They're called the 25.21i speakers. That name and the way it's spelt may fulfill most of the criteria for your bank account app's password. PMC's predilection with type tennis is immensely irritating, but when PMC, all caps, sent over the 25.21i's, text numerals lowercase, what I actually thought to myself was, yes, they are indeed lowercase speakers. Dinky, svelte, slim, a regular down the gym, all of that kind of stuff. They're functional in appearance. That's the 25.21i speakers, which I will continue to call in this review the 21i's for reasons of sanity. Now these speakers cost £2,000 or if you have a particular finish, £2,200. And when I first heard about these speakers, I thought they'd be quite meaty floor standing speaker designs. But I was a little surprised to find that they were not. In, in fact, this is what you get for your £2,000 a relatively small design. So are they worth it? Well, before we get to the sound tests, let's take a closer look. And welcome to the close-up section for the PMC 21Is. And as you can see by this side view, the cabinet is slanted backwards, a bit like mime artist Marcel Marceau walking into the wind. On the front is a 140mm long throw G-weave mid bass unit and in the centre there's an inverted cap just there. Treble is handled by the 19mm soft dome Sonomex tweeter that's derived from PMC's high-end fact speaker range. And around the outside you'll see a larger 34mm surround section. This aids the integration of the two drivers, the mid bass and the treble. The company talks about its new and quote sophisticated crossovers featuring thick copper tracks mounted on quote military grade fiberglass boards. As an aside, military grade is something of a mantra for companies in the hi-fi industry of late. Isn't Hi-fi grade, good enough to shout about then? And if not, why not? Why isn't hi-fi grade better? The principal feature on this speaker design, as far as I'm concerned, is this cheese grater. Or the advanced transmission line base loading, viewed via its front-mounted port. The ATL features the aerodynamically designed laminar vent, which does look rather nice in addition to promising enhanced sonic qualities. It was originally developed for PMC's flagship QB1 studio monitor, and I gotta say, these speakers do have a slight monitor look about them. Now on the rear here is a quite sturdy looking metallic back plate, and in the center, well, a little bit lower than the center, are a couple of robust binding posts. Now these binding posts can handle both banana type terminations, either vertically or horizontally, or as you can see, unscrewing this particular one, they can handle spades as well. Available in diamond black, white, oak, and walnut, these speakers span 340 millimeters by 162 by 284 millimeters and weigh in at around six kilograms. The speakers themselves provide a 86 and a half decibel sensitivity, which isn't very. But how do these speakers actually sound? Are they worth the cash? Well, let's find out and we'll look at the sound tests. And welcome back to the sound quality tests and I began the sound quality tests with a bit of prog and that's where I began with Camel and their 1981 album called Nude and this particular track I tried was called Lies. The PMCs are neutral 
neutral to a fault. It's interesting because I recently reviewed on this channel a Cambridge CXA61 amplifier, and you can see a review of that up in the right hand corner, which also exuded neutrality in its presentation. But that was a sort of budget neutrality. This form of species is rather higher end neutrality, and there's a difference. The PMC 21Is give you neutrality from the calm waters of a blue lagoon, allied by the smoothest mid-range performance this side of a Cadbury's chocolate advert. Nothing phases the PMC speakers, and I mean nothing. Now sometimes that feature can bite the PMCs in the bum, but we'll get to that in a moment. But if you're after a pair of neutral speakers that provide a high-end sound with calming mids, then grab these PMCs right now. If faced with disciplined music, the sense of balance is absolute. This Blue Lagoon sound was coupled here with an absolutely incredible soundstage. Well, really, it was the size of the soundstage. This had so much air in the soundstage, it would actually power NASA's proposed moon base. The space on offer here had me wondering if I was hearing speakers emanating music from the ceiling and the walls. The sense of distance was quite devastating. So you've got balance, you've got neutrality, but these aspects, these quite positive aspects, were so strong, so dominant, so overwhelming, that there may have been a little bit lost in translation somewhere. How so? Well, I'll give you an example, shall I? During the middle eight portion of this track, there's a very nice Hammond organ solo. Now, the Hammond's power, its personality, its inherent character is in its grain, its sonic fabric. Now, if you could compare, say, a piano with a bowl of cornflakes soaked in hot milk for an hour, and then imagine eating that gooey mess, then a Hammond organ is a bit like opening a bag of granola and then eating that granola dry like a bag of crisps. The Hammond has crunch, it has bite, and hard edges, and grumbling undertones. The sort that stick in your teeth and get between your toes. Hammond organs played well are all soul. Not with me? All right, let me try a different one. Imagine a pack of cards. A precise pair of speakers will allow you to hear each and every flick as you riffle those cards. As the end of each card is twanged, you will hear the bounce of each piece of card. It's that sort of textural detail, that grainy grunt, that a Hammond organ provides, and the PMCs didn't give me as much as I wanted. Some, yes. All, no. What the PMCs tended to do with their beautiful, and it really is beautiful, neutral and open presentation, was to take information and detail and smooth it out. A bit like a wall that's been plastered by a chap who really knows what he's doing. Once that wall has been dried, you're able to run the palm of your hand over the wall and the hand skims across it without so much as a bump or a lump. That's what the PMCs give you. They provide supremely smooth mid-range details but sometimes they remove the grit and the grime of the same, and they even out information. Sometimes that grain and texture is warranted, demanded. But the PMCs will have none of that. So what am I saying? The PMCs offer a bad sound? Ah, oh, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong on this. The point is actually not a damning criticism, more a, a sonic choice. What the PMCs give you is a wholly mature, an incredibly well-developed recital. It might lose some character and mid-range insight while it's doing all of that, but there will be music fans out there who will actually prefer this type of presentation. Again, don't get me wrong on this. Don't think I'm calling the PMCs lifeless or lacking in personality. Far from it. The transmission system on these speakers provides an excellent tonal balance, with a measured yet organically strong suite 
of lower frequencies. Bass guitar had an impressive weight, percussion had an equally impressive sense of attack, while treble was delicate and fragile in cymbal terms. That sense of air in the upper mids helped add and extend reverb details that provided a sense of finesse and an organic realism to the music as a whole. So I tried CD this time, turned to New Order's album Republic and played the single Respect. Now this album does suffer from excessive peak limiting compression, so I wondered how the PMCs would cope. Remarkably well was the answer. The lead vocal was pushed way back in a 3D extension to the stereo image that sat within a sort of pod of air all of its own within a bassy environment. That peak limiting compression I mentioned? Well, that was really no longer a problem. Oddly, it tended to help the PMC speakers. I've never heard this track sound so good. The ability of the PMCs to isolate and separate the instruments was quite remarkable, which meant that the soundstage didn't only sound open, but layered and rich in information. The bass guitar had growl. There seemed to be a string of secondary percussion bells that appeared to be tinkling in the rear of the mix that I had never properly heard before, and the song sounded unusually full and weighty. Even if this was the fortunate meeting of a compressed track, merging successfully with that Blue Lagoon sound I mentioned earlier, to form the ideal sound presentation, I wasn't sure and frankly didn't care because I was having such a good time listening. But I wanted to listen to a CD that offered a more superior master and something a little bit more accurate that demanded precision, and so I turned to a bit of finger-picking guitar from Leo Cocky and the album Regards from Chuck Pink and the track Ayala Traffic. And the result of this more balanced mastered CD, there was that smoothing effect back again, just snipping the fine-edged details off the actual plucked strings like an eager gardener trimming roses. But nevertheless, the PMCs provided an excellent low noise presentation, full of clarity, air and space around the guitar, and a mature, wholly adult feel to the music. So what do I think of the PMC21i speakers? Well, these speakers are not for everyone, and I would heartily recommend a demo, just to see if you connect with the PMCs presentation style. I can see a lot of people being beguiled by the incredible air and space that these speakers offer. There is no doubt the absolute sense of balance and that neutrality will win many friends to the PMC's cause. Above all, when you fire up the 21i speakers, there is a real sense that music is being played with absolutely no boundaries to restrain it. It's quite an event, and one I recommend experiencing. Now, I did mention a couple of variations in price at the beginning of this review, and I will give you a couple of details about that. You're looking at £2,000 if you want walnut, oak, or a white finish, or £2,200 in what's called diamond black. I'll put a link below, and you can check out the finishes for yourself. But that's me done. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much too for hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And if you haven't done so just yet, then knock yourself out. Give it a go. The old buttons down there, they're just begging to be pressed, or clicked, or tapped. Give it a try. You know it makes sense. It'll make your day. It certainly will make mine. Thank you very much for your support again. I would love to see you in the next video, and that will be next week. And until then, from me and my buddy Hollies, bye-bye for now. <laughs>